1965, director Otto Preminger released his film In Harm's Way that starred John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, Patricia Neal, Tom Tryon, and Burgess Meredith. Francho Tone and Henry Fonda are also in the film. Now, it's Memorial Day while I'm recording this video, and I thought, what a great tribute to these people that served in World War II and defended this country. The movie is based on the 1962 book, Harm's Way, by James Bassett. The film follows the lives of several characters at the beginning of the U.S. Navy's involvement in World War II. All this takes place in December of 1941. There are a lot of different plot lines that are flowing throughout this film. Really, there's way too many to try to mention here. But John Wayne, of course, is the lead, and he plays Captain Rock Tory. The other characters in the film are some way attached to him, whether it be that they're his superiors in Washington, D.C., or part of his staff in Hawaii. This movie is nearly three hours long, but it is packed full of quality film goodness. It's an amazing film to watch. The cinematography is unreal. There are no real opening credits in the film. They all end up coming at the very end of the movie. But all in all, Otto Preminger's work in this film is just amazing. He may be a jerk as a director, and most people felt that way. But I'll tell you one thing, he knew how to make a film. He created a film that was really painting an unromantic and realistic picture of the American Navy during this time and how hard the Second World War was. He touches quite a bit on the bureaucratic infighting that went on during the time with the naval brass and the sometimes disreputable private acts of some individuals. This sprawling narrative of this film examines the institutions and the people that run them. The climactic battle with the Japanese fleet was staged mostly with model ships. Kirk Douglas thought that the special effects were so poor that he complained to the director and the studio about it. He offered to restage the scenes at his own expense using the special effects people who worked with him on Paths of Glory from 1957. Now, the film is done in black and white, and there's just something that transfixes you to the screen when you see it in this format. And this was actually John Wayne's final black and white film. Now, as we've talked before in other videos that Kirk Douglas and John Wayne had worked on, they couldn't have been at more opposite ends of the political spectrum. And Kirk Douglas was really surprised that he wanted him for this role in the film. They worked together great in the movie, but they didn't socialize. And their political opinions never came up during the filming. They worked so well together that they ended up starring in other movies together, like The War Wagon in 1967. At the beginning of the film, they show a destroyer escaping the Pearl Harbor attack only with junior officers aboard. And this is based on a true story of the actions of the USS Alwyn. The story of also being pursued out of the harbor by her captain is also based on fact. But rather than just a few hundred feet behind the ship, the captain's launch came closer to being a thousand yards behind. This movie is the movie that led Tom Tryon to abandon his acting career. He had already experienced producer and director Otto Preminger's wrath during the filming of The Cardinal in 1963, and he was completely apprehensive about reteaming with him on this movie. Preminger must have sensed this, and instead of trying to reassure the actor, he just tried to agitate him, constantly chewing him out for his fears in front of other cast members. And then he would walk up behind him and scream, relax, in his ear. The day that that incident happened, he almost quit. He was planning on walking off the set, but other castmates talked him out of it. Now, Patricia Neal plays a nurse in the film, and she says that in this movie, she absolutely adored John Wayne. 
She thought that he was fabulous and was a pleasure to work with. You see, the first time they worked together, she didn't like him at all. She couldn't stand to be around him or in scenes with him. But she said that while he was in Honolulu doing this film, he was a much happier man and much more pleasurable to be around. John Wayne had some real troubling times during the beginning of the 60s and actually the late 50s. And that really affected his performances and everything he did. He wasn't a very happy guy at that time. Now this is something that we're going to touch on pretty soon. And it'll be a video that deals with nothing but this troubling time in John Wayne's life and what caused him to suffer so much during this period. So look for that when it comes out within the next two or three weeks. The film's title comes from a quote by John Paul Jones. And the quote goes, I wish to have no connection with any ship that does not sail fast, for I intend to go into harm's way. Now in the movie, when John Wayne's character is being briefed by Nimitz, a painting of John Paul Jones can be seen hanging on the wall behind Nimitz's right shoulder. Many of the non-military costumes and the hairstyles worn by the women throughout the film were contemporary to the mid-1960s period, during which the film was made, rather than the early 1940s when the film is taking place in. This is particularly noticeable at the dance scene when the film opens. Many of the extras in this scene were in fact active duty officers and their spouses that were assigned to various commands on the island. In the battle scene, it shows a Japanese destroyer when it rams PT-44. According to the Navy battle records, only one PT boat was ever rammed by the enemy. And that PT boat was PT-109, the one that was commanded by John F. Kennedy. George Kennedy, who played Gregory, knew all about ground combat in real life. He rose to the rank of captain in the Second World War, and he received two bronze stars while serving under General George Patton. And it's kind of really thought that Kirk Douglas may have accepted this role as the second lead because his career was in somewhat of a slump at the time. Ever since Spartacus, and along with the failure of Lonely Are the Brave in 1962, Plus, he did a badly received stage version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. All these things together made him feel like he was in the slumps, and he probably was. The premise of this movie, and of the novel, is that the Japanese would try to defend a strategic asset using their most powerful battleship that was afloat, and that was the Yamamoto. But she turns tail and runs from the engagement at the last minute. Apparently, the Japanese officer in the tactical command mistakenly believes that he is about to engage an enemy force several times larger than the actual nearly spent force that he confronts. In a historical fact, the Yamamoto didn't turn tail and run in this battle in October of 1944. This was under circumstances nearly identical to those depicted in this story. Now, John Wayne was terribly sick during the filming of this movie. He was suffering from lung cancer and didn't know it at the time. During the filming, he was constantly coughing up blood. But the crazy thing about it, he continued to smoke up to five packs of cigarettes a day. Shortly after the filming ended is when he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And this was so serious that he really didn't think that he would live through the surgery to remove his lung. At that time, the Sons of Katie Elder was in pre-production. He was concerned as to whether or not he would be able to star in it because he really didn't think he was going to live through this ordeal. And he suggested that Kirk Douglas replace him in the Sons of Katie Elder if he didn't survive the surgery. Now, it wasn't only John Wayne who was sick during the filming of this. Francho Tone was also suffering from lung cancer during the movie shoot. But unlike John Wayne, he didn't survive his first bout with cancer. 
He ended up dying in 1968, but John Wayne ended up surviving this bout and eventually dying from stomach cancer in 1979. If you've never seen this movie, take a look at it. This is an astounding film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.